Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Saturday, January 16th, 2016, and we're honored to have with us in the studio Julian Baker. Watching Audio Tree Live in the studio with Julian Baker. What's up? Welcome. Thank you for coming out and playing for us. I've been a fan for a while, so it's an honor to have you in here, honestly. Oh my goodness. I'm a fan of the program. It's an honor to be here. How um I'm curious, like how big the jump from you just writing these songs, putting them out, and then all of a sudden having to embrace this life of like being a musician happened like how how big was that jump was it you know months of time after it was out and people were paying attention and that kind of thing or was it like just instant um so well so the way you phrase it is interesting it's it's like um and I feel like a lot of people ask me a similar question I've been a musician for a really long time I'm familiar with touring and playing and comfortable but it's always been in other in other contexts. So like I am used to touring yeah. but in a suburban and like sleeping on floors and playing very small shows and I'm so I'm not used to the more professional aspect of it like things like this which was very it was it was a steep learning curve. Sure. Because you know when we started working with a formal team I had never before done publicity in any way other than emailing people please care about my band yeah, do you yeah, want to yeah. run like i'm coming to this city um please hook me and my band up with a show we'll play anywhere we'll play a living room we'll play a house yeah and so when things started to 
occur in a more professional sense. It was a lot of, I still get overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. My, uh, my manager, Sean, will say, like, tell me things like, oh, Audio Tree wants to work with mm-hmm. you. And I'll say, I don't believe you. <laughs> when they said, w- when I got the call, like, oh, Spray Nagel is going to be on NPR, I said, yeah, whatever. That's funny. Yeah. That's really funny <laughs> because no one cares. No one cares about this, but it's been interesting. Yeah. Uh, so that's with like Forrester and then you had, wh- what were your earlier projects before this? Um. So I've been in the Star Killers, changed her name to Forrester. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been in that band since I was like a sophomore in high school. Before that, I played a lot. I would fill in with other people around town. I played with some friends that I knew. Um. And I would play little coffee shop gigs and stuff. I played in a band with a guy, and we would do, like, John Mayer covers when I was really, really young. Okay, okay. (laughs) And uh, I had a horrible metalcore cover band that did, like, Devil Wears Prada (laughs) stuff in our garage. That's awesome. That was, I shamefully admit. Or not shamefully. No, no. That's that's a phase. Part of the, yeah, yeah. Part Part of of the the trajectory, for sure. Yeah, I'll still jam some Dear Love. Oh, yeah. Beautiful Discord. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> deep references. Deep. Only, only the real fans would know <laughs> that deep real stuff. Only the real fans. But it, it scores me that credit. Oh, yeah. So, so what about your name being attached to the performance? I, I guess, does that... Um, does that force a little bit more of like pressure on yourself? You know, there's not the there's not the separation between like you are Julian Baker and the name on the marquee is Julian Baker. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I guess my question is like, are you able to separate like stage persona and human person at all? Interestingly, I have, I have this conversation quite a bit in, um, a more vague way. Just, uh, being a person who, I try actively to, refute the idea that I have a persona. Okay. That I have a persona of sad, brooding, sure. broken artist. Sure. Um, and I say that a lot in interviews and stuff. I do what I can not to come across as, you know, self-indulgent artist that is... Because uh, I don't want it to seem n- not genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so whatever awkwardness or whatever doesn't align with people's perception of how someone who wrote the record would behave like on stage like how I am all goofy and weird on stage um I think is good because maybe it lends a little bit more honesty um and I know that there are people who there are performers I know that intentionally compartmentalize and they'll say this is who I am this is my job as a musician and then this is me being a normal person. Yeah. But I want to fuse the two because I don't know. I have this SM58 to say whatever, and I feel like I want to make myself accountable to the person I s- am as okay. an artist, you know? Yeah, yeah. So in some ways, I try to unify the two, but not... More so maybe than uh, others that you've seen or just... No, not saying, like, there are people out there no, that no. are really fake. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, like, I don't want to... Um, I want to be as much of Julian Baker, the person on stage and in interviews sure. as I am when I'm like at you know, my out. house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is weird that that's even a thing. Right. Because I don't think of myself as someone who even has enough clout to demand considering those things. Mm-hmm. I'm just not. Right. But you're, I mean, increasingly thoughtful, I, I, I suppose, from meeting you today. It seems like you're you're very well-spoken, very, like... Oh, intelligent, you, you know, it, you. it seems like you would think about these moves pretty, I don't know, for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and you you should be that intentional, I feel, whether you're playing to a huge audience or a small or audience. No, yeah. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're creating with your art, you should be conscious of what it, it's inseparable from you as a person sure. i think that you know there are people that say uh, authorial intent doesn't matter there's no such thing as the artist but i think the opposite mm. like you're it, er, all art is infused with the artist's personal uh intent and you should be conscious of that mm. you know if you're going to do it for a living and held accountable to that atten- intent yeah to some degree mm. yeah i mean there's liberty to say whatever i want but i don't want to misuse or abuse that right Cool. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing. You can roll into your next one when you're ready. Yeah. 
Sorry, that took a train. <laughs> it's all right. At least, uh, at least it didn't go into a dark pit. You yeah. know, it could have gone there. I tried to keep us, <laughs> keep us above. Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Julian Baker. So we were talking a little bit about school. You're taking online classes now. And did you say a lit degree? Yes. Okay, so what's what's the focus there? Um, so it's literature with a minor in secondary education, which means yeah. I'll graduate with licensure to teach high school and a double minor in Spanish. Nice. And would you like to teach? I mean, I, I know you're... I would love to, yeah. Okay, yeah. What what attracts you about that, or what makes you want to do that? Um, so several things. I was in. I'm not going to take up all your time. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's no, like it's I'm fine. setting you up for a PowerPoint. <laughs> so several things. On, Here we go. Uh, I need a whiteboard. Yeah, like a teacher. <laughs> but um, so I was in the audio engineering program, and that was great. And MTSU has one of the best programs of all time it's for awesome. audio engineering yeah you get hands-on experience in ways that have helped me grow like in a technical way but i realized it was it was taking me down a path that was a little bit more technical and a little bit more commercial than i wanted to go and i was mm -hmm. like um so i grew up uh going to house shows and punk shows and stuff and uh there's a guy 
that runs Smith 7 that puts those on, and he's a guidance counselor mm. by day. Okay. And then helps out with this community organization called Smith 7, um, where I, you know, got my, like, musical roots, I yeah. suppose. They and put then, on, they put on, like, DIY shows, Yeah, right? DIY shows and stuff like that. And then also, uh, I had a group of, like, uh, these tattoos are because I had a Spanish teacher that... Um, gave me all this awesome literature and was really invested in me. I had a literature teacher that passed, and um, she she found out I was working way too many hours at my job, and she mm. was like, you need to find another job. You know, it's like they – teachers occupy such a crucial space in raising and shaping who is going to eventually be responsible for – they're going to be adults. Yeah, You're so influential in that way. And it's like, as a performer, say I want to convey a positive message with my art, and that's a little bit more abstract, and I have a lot more license. As a teacher, you have practical application, and you can say, these are important things that you should know just to be a functioning human, Yeah. because this isn't just about Frankenstein. This is about um, the concept of the other. This is about social alienation. This is about the hubris of man, should we even do this, how we treat each other, you instill really, really important ideas in a very ripe age group. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's awesome. And maybe it's a little proud to say, I want to go out there and, like, make a difference. You know, like, I'm going to be the girl in Freedom Riders. (laughs) I don't want to seem, uh, you know, uh, overly romanticizing the teacher's role sure it's like sure. a really important profession it's like someone should do it you know yeah and if you had teachers who like put extra time into you or mm-hmm. spent time molding you right. in, in a way you're paying them back by by Absolutely. going into that profession or something along those lines yeah and it's only because of teachers that foment your interest and genuinely try to build you up not only in the literal way of I'm going to teach you these things about literature, I'm going to teach you these things about math, but they teach you self-confidence. Yeah, yeah. They give you a safe space to grow as a person, to feed your intellect. And I think that's so important. Without those teachers, I wouldn't be here because right. I would have just been down with my nose in a book <laughs> and not thought I was capable of any of the stuff. I wouldn't have even tried. Sure. So, um, where do you stand on like the classics, you know, the top 100 or whatever? Have you read them all? Are you interested in reading them all? Are you all? talking about canon literature? Yeah. I nerdily love canon literature. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I, I do, <laughs> I have my contemporary favorites, yeah. but I don't know. I love like the first record that the LP that we put out as the Star Killers has all these references to like Goethe. Mm. And I feel like in, you know, like, that's nerdy to say, um, but it's there. I mean, I love uh, the, like, LLC that I recently, like, had to create for purposes is, like, a Walt Whitman reference mm. because that dude is incredible. Mm-hmm. And good Lord. You know, I think the classics are the classics for a reason. And, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Contemporary stuff is important also. but. Yeah. I do. I do love me some canon literature. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. You yeah. can roll into your next one when you're ready, Julie. Awesome. Oh, I have to tune. Yeah, do it up. Uh, while she's tuning, I will say a few things. First of all, the record's brand ankle is out now on 6131 Records. You can get it. And uh, she's on tour through the end of January, um, which is mostly East Coast. So check out the website for those dates. Also, Audio Tree News. You can watch the live stream of the Tomorrow Never Knows Festival. The show's at Lincoln Hall tonight and tomorrow on our website. And take it away.
Watching Audio Tree Live, we're in the studio with Julian Baker. Okay, you can get ready to go over to the piano. I'm just curious if there's a book that you think should be um, required reading that maybe isn't for like Ooh. school in school. I think. Hmm. I tell you, I got nothing. Got me like on. Fire for I wanted to like stand up and flip over the table, <laughs> um, reading letters to a young poet by Rilke. Okay, it's so important that in song of myself only because I think the way that they write about art is applicable to all life experience. Like the way Rilke says, you can't criticize um, a young poet because it's like a child screaming. They just want expression, and it's very honest, and it's valid, and it's worthful. And I think it, like every child that's in school should read that passage from Rilke and think, what I'm doing right now doesn't have to be perfect. What's important and what makes it valid is that I made it, and it's meaningful to me. Mm. And like, and that's basically what Walt Whitman accomplishes with Song of Myself, too. And he's like, I celebrate myself and I sing myself because, you know, Crudely, like, my B.O. is, like, better than the aroma of, you know, heaven. Yeah. It's, like, that's such a humorously crude thing to say. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you're awesome. You, little kid. Mm -hmm. You know, you're valuable. And that's cheesy. No, I like is it, though. Cheesy no. Too, like, no, I don't know. it's not cheesy. I like it. Thank you. Yeah. Here, as I sit with my legs. Yes. <laughs> this is your move to turn around and say, oh, I didn't see you there. We were just either. talking about yeah, literature. I, know. I didn't. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You'll have to do it at the end. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, um, uh, test it out. You know, bang on the piano a sec before you roll in. Take sure. your time. And again, Sprained Ankle is out, and you can check her out on tour all the way through the end of January. Okay. <laughs> scales do the classic music theory proud is that good enough for yeah. you guys i just want to give a check yeah sure. for sure
taking my meds So lock all the cabinets Send me to bed Cause I know you still work I'm gonna get scared Cause I'm alone again I don't like the things I see You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Julian Baker. Thank you seriously so much for oh. performing and hanging out. It's been my honor. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, thanks to awesome people in the studio and sound engineers, camera and lighting crew making it look beautiful, and viewers, thanks for watching. You can support Julian by downloading the session when it comes out in a few weeks and send a shot via social media to us or her if you just want to connect. From all of us here at the Audio Tree Studios, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.